<laughs> These fucking hieroglyphs are shaped like dicks. <laughs> Fl floppy ones too. Hold on. It's not even the. Happy to see you, Derek. <laughs> it doesn't uh, seem that happy. Look how floppy it is. Whatever. I'm sucking on that. Um. <laughs> oh wow. How are we starting this episode? Did we just, just did. <laughs> before we discuss this, is the first time we have been curmudgeoning together in person since before COVID. Yeah. Since I'm not wearing a mask, I need you to tell me where you've been. Ooh, that's on a need to know basis. I need <laughs> to know. For, are you checking for, <laughs> never mind. Um, where are we? Ooh, a couple beach bar. pictures. Pebble Beach, yes. We're, not We're eating beach. fancy food because we are fancy guys. And fancy drink. Mm. Um, it's pronounced La Croix. Uh, anyway, I'm not singing, uh, but if I were to sing, there's only one song. Tell me. Etta James is Outlast. Oh, yes. Did because, we use that one recently? Yeah, we did, but it's been like 200 years since yeah, we've done Yeah, but every time we do that, we say that. Do this, we say that. Maybe that means we should probably curmudgeon more often. Or, I've been trying. Okay. For the record, we are both very busy people. However, every time I am available, hyphen is not. And every time hyphen is available, I'm not. So that's why it takes long months. We did speak to... I saw you last week. I had a Maserati Quattro Porte. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Why did you have Maserati Quattro Porte? God, you actually sound like you don't look. It's a, it's a very weird thing. Uh, Story of I, my life. I had a uh, Quattro Porte because I did a Revelations. I did a triple header of Revelations, including a um, Maserati Quattro Porte 5 uh, and a GMC Cyclone, which I want badly. You want a Cyclone? Funny enough. Wait, so this is none of the things that you like. It is five. turbocharged. Yes. There are five of them. They, it's right a, off the bat. It's a truck. Uh, no, I've done trucks before. I did the Isuzu Pup. It's not really a truck. If you pulled up next to a truck and told them there was a truck... Do you know how long the cyclone is? Is this some kind of start of a joke? No. Inches. Number of inches long. A cy I said a cyclone, not your dick-shaped fucking Harry bows. Um, <laughs> it's 187 inches long. I mean, it's, okay, it is... Okay, so that's, and, by like, the way, that's like Range Rover SWB. A Range Rover Classic. Classic, yeah. yeah. And high? Classic. I don't remember exactly how high it was, but I will have an insert for this. It is not higher than my e-golf. I think it's like the same height as the e-golf. Okay. So it's American. It's a truck. It's turbocharged. No, truck doesn't count. Truck doesn't count. Okay. It's V6. Yes. Which you hate. Yes. You said turbocharged. That's three. I did say turbocharged. Uh, so it's American, turbocharged, V6. Two other things I don't Four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive. Uh, what's the last one? Uh, hey, honey, we're going to the grocery store. Automatic. Yeah. Oh Although it does have a shit on that. Yeah. Jesus. So it's five things I don't ever do. It's not that I don't you want dropped? an American car. Have you been dropped recently? On my on head? head? Yeah. Yeah, repeatedly as a child. No, no, <laughs> recently though. Something has changed. I'm still a child. Yes. Act like one. Uh, yeah, still no, a child. It was one of the biggest surprises because I went back and read all the reviews of the car and there's a little bit of, there's a lot of lore on this car. Because, you know, it's a really crazy, one-off, stupid idea that GM did. And I, and I, to get to the bottom of where the inconsistencies are in the history of this, I wound up actually getting in touch with the guy who created it. Uh, this guy named Kim. He's the guy who dreamt it up and pushed it through as a product planner at, at GM. And so it is actually, the, the original road test of the car was 4.3 to 60. And then the sec, car and driver's second wow. road test. Right, in 1991. Yeah, which is like um, a second and a half faster than a Testarossa? Uh, all I know, it was, at, in, in 1991, it was the fastest, the, the quickest accelerating car you could buy, period. Um, and it was one-tenth of a second slower than a car that's out in the parking lot right now. Your Cabriolet? No. <laughs> it's, it's a little quicker than the Cabriolet. At 40, at 40. At 40, which was not available for sale at that point, so it didn't count. But at 4.3 to 60... Um, and then the next car driver's next test on it was a 5.3 to 60. So I was like, oh, well, the first one was a prototype and it was a complete cheater. And as it turns out, no, the second one was just broken. They really did do like 11s in the quarter mile, 11.98. I mean, the fucking thing is so fast. So 
I, so I, ex- I expected it to be fast because I, I got that story and then I got like a 40,000, 30, 40,000 mile, absolutely perfect, beautiful truck. Uh, from these owners who are just fun and silly and, you know, they're, they're like, break stand it, like, go, and you know, it, launch it. What I didn't expect is that it was a monster on the back road. Like, really fast and capable. And handles. And handles. Rode well, Brakes. didn't care. Drums in the back. But there's no weight in the back. Um, it stopped. Once. Couple, four times. <laughs> four times. <laughs> I, look, that's the same hill, that's the same hill that I do sort of all the Revelations <laughs> cars, your 580s brakes were on way bigger fire than these brakes were. And it Is could that be a scientific that, term? Yeah. Yeah, the 500e's brakes held up less well <laughs> than the Cyclones. So, well, that's fine. I sold it anyway. Yeah, well, I can shit on it now. Hmm. Um, 2.4 million views on that epi- episode later where I can be like, this thing is the world's most perfect sedan. Kind of was. Except for the brakes. <laughs> it's not a great back road, you know. Right. Not a great back road car, but... Um, Good car. But the Cyclone was really genuinely entertaining to drive. Hmm. Um, so I kind of want one now. Okay. So, uh, so is that car. a supplement or substitute for your other shopping effort, which would be a Honda, Honda Beat? Beat. There's a Beat right now on Bring a Trailer that, thank God, this episode will air afterwards. <laughs> so if I bought it, you'll see. I don't think I will. Um, still looking for a Beat. Still looking, now looking for a Cyclone. But I have eight, I'm up to eight too cars. Too bad the Cyclone is a short bed, or else you could put the Beat in the Cyclone and buy the, the boat. The Beat is a short Beat, so it might still fit in that bed. Hmm. Not really. Um, I don't know. i got to stop. Eight. Wait. Eight. You bought something. I bought another car. But yeah. we talked about this last did we? episode. I don't know. I Beatrice? Yeah. Her name is Beatrice. She's an 89 325i sedan. She used to be horrible bronze it, which is the, the worst color by far. On. Are you fucking kidding me? Who, where'd you get this camera guy from? I don't know. He's a rental. <laughs> Does that mean we can abuse him? Like we can jump him? Off oh, neutral drop. rental car stories. Uh, we're going to neutral drop the camera guy. All right, we're back. We had a slight camera issue. Um, anyway, rental car. What'd you do? Rental car? You said speaking of rental car stories. I don't know what you're talking about. What were we? We were talking about uh, Beatrice. Yes, we were talking about Beatrice. So Beatrice is my new to me E30 for rallies and track days um, and such. So that's it. I bought something useless for both of those things. You bought a couple things. So we're going to have to... Oh, they're both useless for both of those things. They may just be useless, period. Okay. Um, Confess. I bought an R129. That's all 500. Okay. My second one, which was basically to replace the 500E because it's a lot of the 500E experience for a lot less money. I hate convertibles. That's my least favorite thing about it. So you Um, bought a convertible because you hate convertibles. So you bought the convertible version, basically, of your 500E sedan, even though you love sedans and hate convertibles. Just say yes. Yes. Okay. (laughs) Next question. (laughs) Why? No, you already said it's cheaper. Uh, 129s are amazing. The really extraordinary, wonderful, high-quality cars. Uh, And then the next thing I bought was also a convertible. (laughs) Um, Because you hate convertibles. Because I hate convertibles. Mm -hmm. Um... An Alfa Romeo Giulietta Spider Veloce. The power of maybe 90 horses. Uh, 1,290 cc's. Um, that, those are very enthusiastic horses. That's quick. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, you drove it for the first time a couple days ago. Mm-hmm. I have to pretend that I don't know what he bought for your sake, but, you know. <laughs> uh, it is... Red. A cutie. Orange. Orangey red. Mm-hmm. With the parts that have paint. About that the same color. color as this penis shaped. What are these twin snakes? Anyway, so this is a 1961. One. Yeah, uh, Julieta Spider Veloce. Uh, I went to some guy's house to buy some books uh, about old lanchas and I left with the car. <laughs> as one does. I mean, this is why you don't ever do shopping for books on lanchas, ever, because you buy cars. And that has never happened in the history of the world. Here's my favorite thing about the car. You have the telegram sent to the hotel to yes. purchase the car. Is this what? Yeah, so the guy bought it. He was an American guy living in France, and he flew to Rome to buy it. And, uh, no, sorry, took a train to Rome to buy it. So he has the train tickets from when he went to Rome, and he has the telegram from the hotel confirming the reservation, and he has the original purchase invoice and all that stuff. So this is a binder full of just 60-year-old documents that the guy kept freaking everything. Uh, I mean, I love how like, people are like, books and records, you're like, no, I didn't keep that timing belt receipt. 
Yes. And this guy kept the telegram From confirming the hotel. his hotel reservation. Correct. Yes. That is amazing. Yeah. I would have bought uh, the card just for that. I mean, I didn't. I have kind you, of did. Have you ever sent a telegram? I mean, you are 94 years old. They were... The, uh, yes, <laughs> I, said, I write them mode myself. Of I, I, uh, you tap them out and... Yes, exactly. I, I, I send them myself. Um, and you can... I mean, like, it comes in an envelope and it's in the, like... I guess the original envelope that's from the hotel that's that uh so cool yeah uh so it's really fun it's a little bit it's quite rough uh but it it's kind of like a miata from the 1950s it's kind of what it is and then, like you do you read the period magazine articles and you're like oh this thing is everybody raved about the brakes um everyone was drunk mm-hmm. well yeah. you've and also driving 1950s brakes yeah. Uh, yeah so it's drums all around correct unassisted Correct. So there's 14 inches of initial pedal travel, yes. i.e. mush, where you, you're, the further the pedal goes, the more you the pucker more you and scream, yes. <laughs> but the less anything happens. And then, finally, once you are, apply, apply 540 pounds worth of <laughs> strength to the pedal, the vehicle begins to slow down. I think they're actually pretty decent. They work. Um, once you calibrate yourself to what the pedal right. needs to make things happen. And, and the important thing about, I think... In old cars, people always complain about no brakes, and I think one of the most important things about brakes being like scary or not is if you apply more force, does the car slow down more? Mm-hmm. And these do have the feature where if you apply more force, <laughs> the car slows down more. I mean, cars with truly bad brakes don't do don't. that. It's like no matter how hard you push, the amount of retardation is the same, and it's like lackluster. You're not allowed to use the word retarded anymore, or retardation. I used it in my last video, uh, the LFA video. I'm seeing it. Um, I used the word retardation in it. <laughs> On ignition timing or of uh, uh, retardation of acceleration during shifts would be uh, b- brakes actually. Okay. Uh, I was a comment about the amount of braking that you get for the amount of pedal force. Everything about that car is super like responsive, and so you apply normal forces to it, and you're just like head through the windshield. This is what I love about our world. We are in the middle of talking about a 1961 Alpha with a 1300 cc something horsepower car and drums. And a second later, you're like, so when I was driving that LFA... <laughs> yes. Um, and I bought... Well, A, the LFA cost a metric ton of money. Yeah. But I w- actually would not buy one. <gasps> Why not? It is so... We've talked about this, I think. Uh, it's so narrowly focused that it's really great if you get it in exactly the right place and then the rest of the time you're like Ugh, the car is not happy and I'm mm. not happy either because it, the car is not getting used the correct way and it just has this really it's really tightly focused on a really specific type of use and it's brilliant to that and then the rest of the time it just feels slightly sort of ac- awkward and out of step with w- what I was hoping for huh. and that's why the exact opposite of the NSX which I drove the, the day before which and is so weird. Then you know, and that's the beauty of the Julietta. I mean, if you think that you are driving at, you, well, you you are using all of the capability of your Volkswagens, um, but in the Alpha, same thing. I mean, it's just flat out all the time, yeah. and there's just something really magical about that. And I think people who are these young spotter people who are interested in the aesthetics of the cars and don't have licenses potentially yet or like I think that the, they are, haven't had that experience yet of trying to wring the maximum capability out of a car and realizing how joyful that is. Mm-hmm. That's something that I think we're in on a for Car Week uh, that is like potentially something that is a generational shift um, but I, I don't know. You, you, the idea of ha- driving a car slow, a slow car fast, right? Yes. So this well, not necessarily fast, but yeah. <laughs> eleven tenths. Eleven tenths. This is interesting. This is this is these are stories that can only happen in Monterey. So yesterday I was giving rides to people in uh, Lotus Evora GTs on Laguna Seca, and I was doing genuinely seven tenths. And there were a, a lot of people who were racers, who race vintage cars all the time, who. Released every profanity possible when I floored it in this car. Right, because they're used to vintage cars. They're used cars. to vintage cars. And, and I forget, like, oh, this is, they're like, this high power, high horsepower. And I'm like, it's a fucking V6. Like, it's not even a fast car. Um, right, but they're used to driving, right. what, like a Giulietta or well, well, like one of the guys, a one, Formula Ford. From this. Or Alpha GTVs and stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah. And then, so I go from that today. So I love it. This is wrapped around your Alpha, alpha conversation. But I go from that today. I met... Um, the singers, C Z I N G E R, mm-hmm. um, and one of the goals with that two thousand horsepower car is to make it interesting at normal speeds. 
And I just said, thank you. Like, you what a possible? concept. I don't know. I haven't driven the car. I sat in it. It's really, really cool because it's a center seat sort of tandem thing. But just the fact that one of the guys I was, I was speaking to um, had previously worked at Koenig, Koenigsegg. And he said, like, the problem is with all these cars is they're just bored. Um, and so they, the, the, the speeds that all the hypercars can attain is unattainable both on, a, on the road or on track. So it needs to be interesting at all speeds. And, and what I say to people all the time, I point out is cars have gotten faster and faster and faster and faster, but traffic hasn't. And all of, I, I love that people lose their mind over new M3 and I love that people lose their mind over, you know, all these Lamborghinis and stuff like that. Do you? I love when people are excited about cars. Yes. Let me, okay. I'll rephrase it that way. But let me tell you, driving a car that shifts itself at 1400 RPM max um, because that's all you can do in the real world is not as exciting as getting into your shitty old Alpha, and that's not an actual. No, no, I agree. It's, no, right? no, no, no. I... And hammering the fuck out of it, and then looking down and seeing thirty oh, one. <laughs> wow, I'm, I'm like below the speed limit. And I mean, we took it for a ride around Pebble, and I don't want to be the guy, the first guy of the the car week who gets thrown in jail. But I really was afraid to push the car. <laughs> Every time I look down, I'm below the speed limit. Yeah. And there's a beauty in that because yeah. it was fun and you get to really exercise the car. And yeah, and it. you're exploring the outer limit of things when they start to get interesting. Yeah. I mean, I certainly didn't do any handling stuff. Um, you should because have. You kept saying that. But look, my, my experience with 50, 50s cars is that they're all terrible. And in, wonderful to look at often. Very often sound great. But they're all tractors. They all ride like shit. They don't handle well at the limit. Um, and there's just a, a whole new language you have to learn on how to interact with the car because nothing is linear and nothing works right. That alpha, I'm pointing that way because it's outside, it's right. There is, is an exception to that. Like it has compliance. Mm -hmm. Something that, you know, strangely, like 50s American cars are all the super floaty, whatever, but every impact is this whack. And yeah. so you, you have the Leaf shut springs. heart. Yeah. And, and, but underdamped. Underdamped. So it's, an, it's a car that's both soft and harsh at the same time. The Alpha is fluid like a Miata. Just yeah. didn't care about bumps. Mm -hmm. um, no wonder people drove those cars and thought. And lost it. I was reading all the Period Magazine articles and everybody was really excited about the brakes and the chassis. But right. this is how, and the motor. Because the motor revs smoothly to 7,000, which is in an era when you know, these long stroke motors with cam and block... Could make it to five uh, if they barely were barely make it to five, and there would be no reason to go up there because there was mm -hmm. no power up there. Right. Um, so yeah, it was the car was a revelation. It was very ahead of its time, and that's why it feels more contemporary, even though yeah. it only has ninety horsepower. Um, ninety horsepower is a lot. And what is it? What it was way eight seventeen hundred pounds, sixteen hundred pounds? Oh, it's a shade over two twenty two. It's that heavy? Yeah. Wow. Sorry. It's that convertible top mechanism. <laughs> the one that's made out of <laughs> toothpicks. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> But still, 90 horsepower and 2,000 pounds, I mean, not bad. But I mean, I feel like such an outlier for having that interest in that, in that car. And around car week, like this is a place where you see these types of cars. And I was at this sort of industry thing where there were these, some people talking about who are in the industry about market trends and all that stuff. And there was a dinosaur there who commented about how the cars from the 1950s, the D, Jaguar D-types, which is the car that Jaguar won Le Mans with several times in the 1950s. I mean, it was a really extraordinary high-performance car that pioneered a lot of technology, blah, blah, blah. He said, why are these cars worth a quarter as much as McLaren F1s? And he seemed really upset about that. Uh, and is he sort of very short and looks like a, has a mustache and he chases classic cars? I, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so here's the bus, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so he seemed really upset about that, and I said the reason for this is that cars from the 1950s have no relevance to people who are in a buying mood right now. Right. The people who are in a buying mood are not the people who are in a buying mood 15, 20 years ago. Uh, those people are all in a like selling mood. Selling mood, you know, or buying houses for their children who can't afford to buy them themselves. <laughs> Or ed college but educations. You're right. I mean, at the end of the day, there's someone who's 20 years older than Wayne Carini. Sorry to name drop. That is all upset that their brass era such and such and such is worth $5.27 now. Because mm -hmm. that's not relevant to people. 
Well, yeah, I think I brought up stagecoaches to just take it to an absurd <laughs> extreme. Wow. I said, do you care about stagecoaches? You know, yeah. like what is happening here is that the, there's a generation of people who's not getting exposure to these types of cars. I love them. I grew like I, I grew up formative years, automotive years, spending a lot of time with them. I really appreciate them, and that's why my spirit age is 94. Mm -hmm. uh, but I came from a place where I was interacting with them daily, and I got all of this experience where I'm like, wow, this is really extraordinary. This is special. I really like this experience. I believe that if the new generations were able to get that kind of exposure to these things, I think they would probably like it. They just don't have any reason to because the people who own them, dinosaurs, don't take them out anywhere, don't use them, and they don't get seen anywhere, and they don't take people for rides. And so if anybody should be, if those people are concerned about the future of those cars, they should be exposing as many young people as they possibly can to that experience. I mean, it's like Haggerty teaching teenagers how to drive yeah. manuals. It's, it's an investment. It's a sort of strategic mm -hmm. thing, and that's one of the things I like to do with videos is just try to get explain the relevance of something like a 330 GTC, which a person in their 30s or 40s shouldn't really have any experience with or understanding of its meaning or why it's so great like that's what we that's what i would like to try and do i mean i know it's an uphill battle and, it is an uphill battle but it doesn't it's it's it pays off because when you start digging down ultimately bts with dts and revelations are the same idea right it's taking cool cars and telling telling giving people a compelling reason to to, to love them mm -hmm. because i just will see some old car um for example, things pre pre my time, anything seventies and before, uh, I didn't grow up. They don't have relevance uh, to me. But you start learning the stories, you start seeing the cool stuff about it, and then you transport yourself back to that time and and think about what that meant then. Then it suddenly becomes interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you need the context, you need the exposure, mm -hmm. you need also the experience because these well, things are such right. overwhelming experiences. Like you were talking about with my Alpha, where it's like. You were going 31 miles an hour and you're like, I'm on the edge of yeah. being alive. Right. Like, I could die at any moment. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, you know, to get that at 31 miles an hour with the amount of kinetic energy that comes right. with that at that speed is, mm -hmm. is uh, I think, pretty charming. And that's, I th that's probably why people like motorcycles also, because you feel pretty alive, right. even at, at low speeds. And frankly, that's why I like the cars that I do. Mm -hmm. the, the cars that I do are very much about experience and not speed. Right. Yes. I mean, the joke is the bitch basket. I had some guy yesterday be like, that's not really your car. We've got to ride back to the car at the track in a golf cart. And the guy was like, that's not really your car. And I'm like, yeah, it is. And he was like, seriously, you're going to, you're telling me you're going to get into that bitch basket and you're going to drive. And I'm like, here's the key, line up whatever the fuck you have and let's go. And he was like, for what? I'm like a race around the track. I'm on all seasons. And he was just like, what are you crazy? Um, but at the end of the day, so I joke that the car is so fast, but it doesn't matter. I, I, I would have gotten on two wheels. He would have laughed and, and crashed into a tree. But the, the point is, my cars aren't fast. They just feel fast. And that's always what I'm chasing. I mean, the only car that I have that's quick is the Lotus. And that really feels fast because you want to talk about a motorcycle for, for the road. But even the 308 GT4, that was one of those things. You pulled up with that car, you know, however, however many years ago. And I'm like, why'd you buy that? Uh, hand the keys. Right? It's the experience. I had not spent any time in that car. And I sort of thought, oh, I've driven V8 Ferraris before. I've driven this before and I've driven that before. Never knowing that the experience of that car is just fundamentally different from the other ones. Mm -hmm. And so what you're saying is that we should be giving rides to people in our cars. and that's, We're just giving that's people good. keys. No. <laughs> no, not happening. <laughs> Have fun. You want to give your uh, keys to, to, to someone who's never driven? Okay. okay, that Alpha's good. But like a lot of these old cars, are. you have to learn how to drive them. I mean, the carburetion is the trickiest right. part of that car, right. but it has a decent gearbox. I mean, it's just very modern, you feel, in gearbox. Shocking. Yeah. That actually works like a normal car, where yes. most Alphas, 10 years later, 20 years later, didn't. Correct. Yeah. Like the GTV6 was a much more... Never mind. I shouldn't have brought that car up. Never mind. Uh, a Cal GTV6. A, a normal GTV6. <laughs> Any GTV6. It's still a pain in the ass. Yeah. Compared Correct. to that. Yeah. Correct. Um, but this, you bring up something... You brought up something really pointed before. We're at Monterey Car Week. This is a celebration of incredibly expensive and valuable, important pieces of automotive history. For some people. That's not, not us, right? And so I think part of that education is also saying to people like Pebble Beach, the Pebble Beach Concord Elegance is million dollar cars that are placed on a field and the, the tickets are hundreds, hundreds million, of dollars. Not if you're gonna win. Okay, so you need to make a million dollar donation to some charitable organization. Oh, I mean, the car is... Yeah, exactly. And then you spend $3 million in a restoration on a car that's worth only two, um, and then you have a chance of not winning. But 
the what I like about this week is that there are so many events that aren't focused on that type of car. So this morning I went to the tour. You were how you were working, um, but the tour is one of the things that participants at the Concours can part, can partake in, and they drive I don't know whatever fifty miles or whatever whatever it is. But I go to a corner where the cars have to come to a stop at the bottom of a hill. Um, and make a 90 degree right and then go up this quite steep hill. And there was a Bugatti who didn't quite have enough steam to make it up the hill, which is strange for a Bugatti, but he had to stop and back down. And so you have somebody backing down in a Bugatti and there's a traffic jam and some like a Countach came around the corner because Countach is here, apparently old enough to be in Pebble now. Um, but you have this great mix of like, you know, Maserati, whatever the gorgeous, beautiful little coupe thing is. GCS. Yeah, that one. Um, you have this great, and you get to hear the cars at full song going up this hill. I love that. I don't love those cars. They're not relevant to me and what I want to own or really drive. But I love that experience of smelling them, you know, smelling the gas, hearing them go hearing up a them, hill. Seeing them in motion seeing them in motion, instead of yeah. at rest on a, on a and line. And then I go to Laguna Seca and, you know, Haggerty had a thing, the thing yesterday where people could, could just come in. I think they had to pay a nominal amount of money um, and get hot laps from pro race drivers and me. But, but pro race drivers in, you know, fast cars. And then you have Concorde Lemons on Saturday, which is um, ship boxes, basically. Of course, I judge that because the only thing I'm qualified to judge. Um, but, uh, you know, Legends of the Autobahn, which is German cars. Concorso Italiano, which is Italian cars. Works, which is Porsche. Um, the Quail, which is $1,000 for a friggin' ticket at this point. It's just, that's a disgusting amount of money to spend on a ticket. Um, but you're going to see cars you're never going to see ever, ever anywhere else in the world. And there's a lot of world. variety. And if you find that the stuff that is at Concorde Elegance is not relevant mm -hmm. to you, speaking of the term <laughs> relevant, we, um, then, then Quail fixes that because there's some contemporary right. stuff. There's basically every era of cars represented right. and they're all pretty extraordinary. It's really, really well curated and that's why everybody freaks out about that event. That and right. the free food and wine, I suppose. But it's well, right. So free but it's, that's, I mean, I will be there for the first time in many, many years because I, I'm not, emceeing Legends of the Autobahn this year. Mm -hmm. um, but the events that I look forward to, Little Car Show, which is just on the street and free, Concord and the Avenue, which is on the street and free, um, the, the sort of things that are there for real enthusiasts to come by. Grassroots Motorsports kickoff party was actually awesome this year. I mean, they're judging, I, I judged that. I've judged Volkswagen, BMW, and best 80s, 90s car. Um, but there were some cool things, like genuinely cool cars there. Um, so I love that we can come to a place where it looks all snooty and like, oh, this, I lost $3 million on this car and I just don't care, is met with Concord Limits. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I kind of worry that people are like, oh, Concord, you know, it's just a bunch of, it's a clean car show for billionaires. Yeah, but the rest stuff around it is Well, good. yeah, there's probably two dozen events in all. The, I would say the hardest part about it is finding a place to sleep. Yeah, uh, a reasonable hotel room. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. but this, this it, it, was, it was neat to have a year off. Because every year I say I'm not coming back, um, and then I come I back never every say year. That. Do you? You know? Oh. oh yeah, every every year by the time Sunday happens, I'm like I'm over this. I've seen too many people. It's not the people; it's just car overload. I mean, yeah, um, it's to the point where no exaggeration. You know, an Aventador drives by and you don't look at it. Right. Because oh, yeah. it's too boring. Well, it's an Aventador. I mean, yeah, I purposely I but never I'm let an Aventador driver yeah. see that I'm looking at the car. If I do, <laughs> I try to make sure. Um, that I don't yeah, my head but it's, I mean, eyes. I'm looking at it. There's an F40 in the parking lot right here. I drove a 288 GTO an hour ago. And like, some guy just handed me the keys. Like, and, and I, my default answer is no. I don't want to drive your shitbox. Uh, I, and you've driven an F40. I have. Okay, so from what you've told me, it's better than an F40. So um, I don't need to drive an F40 now because I've never driven one. It was mm. fucking awesome. Yeah, the, the F40. 40 is actually a surprisingly civilized car, which is yeah. my... That is surprising. I mean... Because look at it. Yeah, exactly. But it's a car that isn't... It's really intimidating, like when you walk up to it with the keys in your hand and you're like, I'm going to go drive in a 40, but it actually is pretty... Um, you can make it as scary or not scary as you want. Hmm. Like, it's not by default a scary car. Can I drive that one? <laughs> uh, don't answer this on camera. We don't know the edge of the turning ropes. Oh, I don't care about that. It's not my problem with the engine blows. Um, no, that's what I like about the 288 is it doesn't look that. I mean, I, I want that in my driveway. I want that parked in front of my house, obviously, to look at. But the 288 doesn't look like that. It kind of looks more normal. Yeah. Um, but, 
man, that's easily and by easily the best V8 Ferrari I've ever driven. Um, just uh, competent. High bar. I mean, not I don't the like most bar. V8 Ferraris. I like the 3.8 GT4. Yeah. I like the F40. I've driven one. Um, I mean, uh, that was my list. <laughs> I like the F430 a lot. Uh, 458 wasn't my favorite, but F430 was great. Um, Scuderia was. <laughs> um, 360 Challenge for Dolly, yes. 355, okay. Um, but mostly I like the front end of V12 cars. But this thing was like Lotus steering, just absolutely talkative, wonderful steering. At 40s like that. Communicative um, without being tram liney. Suspension travel for days. Didn't care about bumps, didn't scrape anywhere. And I was, I was, I wasn't doing anything unconscionable, but moving it? right here, right around the roads around here, which are bumpy and lumpy and fine. Um, but it never scraped, didn't care about anything. Great sight lines out. Perfectly linear throttle response. Driving position? Fine. You didn't Good. have the weird steering no. wheel issue that 308s have? No. no. It, okay, it's not a friggin' golf, but it's fine. Like, every time I get into a 308, like GTB GTS, I can't with the wheel is so fucking laid back and far away. And then one like leg is like here and I'm driving this and it's just awkward. None of that. I got in. How did you fix it, all that? I don't know. I don't know. But I just put it in gear and went. The clutch was great. I don't know what fuel injection. It, I can't figure it out. It's got to be D-Jet because it's pulsed injectors. But I'm, I'll go down that. I can't. I don't even know what the hell it is, but it started and idled perfectly. Never bucked. Really good bo boost control. Boost builds and builds and builds and builds through the revs. Couldn't believe how fast it was. Um, sounded good. Not, doesn't sound like a 355, but wow. Wow. One of the Well, that's the best why they're worth $3 million. It's a good thing I didn't know how much they were. I thought, <laughs> I thought they were still less than that. Better I don't know what these things are worth. Yeah, no. Um, um, but yeah, Car Week. Do attend. That's, do attend. That's I think my we said this last time. Didn't we do this two years ago and say, do attend, and then no, the world fell apart? we started Carmudgeon. Oh, we, we have not done a Carmudgeon In, episode ever while a car week was happening. I feel like we did one right afterwards. We started Carmudgeon after the last right. car week, yeah. is what I meant to say. Um, I feel like we did, an, like maybe even the first episode was on car week. I haven't watched it. Do you watch this? No, except for when I want to hear the uh, Pontiac Endurance Test story. <laughs> <laughs> the rental cars. <laughs> rental car abuse. I was actually in a different episode. In any case. Um, yeah. Do attend. Uh, there's stuff to do for free. You have to hack it. Uh, and don't spend $1,000 on stuff. If camping. Got, uh, camping at Laguna Seca, for example. That's, that's an option. Like camping. Of course you don't. You're a 94-year-old woman. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I mean, is that laughter because you're offended? Or is that laughter because it's fairly accurate? Speak up. I can't hear you, Sonny. Yeah, do they have room service at the campground? <laughs> uh, My alpha would be sitting outside. I can't. Could not possibly tend. I couldn't fit a tent in my alpha mare. That'd be ridiculous. Oh, yes, that would never It does work. have a huge trunk. Mm hmm. And there's quite a bit of space inside the car behind the seats, unless the convertible top is stowed. Yeah. Um, we, the fun drive down was fun. I mean, yes, it was anti road rage. It was the first time I think I've seen you drive more than six minutes without honking and screaming at someone or shaking your fist in quiet <laughs> disapproval. <laughs> yes, which is quite surprising also because it has a wonderful sounding horn and I would like every excuse to use it, but it just, I mean, with 90 horsepower, you just can't. Although there are moments when I would get stuck and then it's problematic because it's difficult to get momentum back. Mm. But. Yeah, 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 I didn't see. Uh, you were on the phone. We were on the phone the other day. You were in, I think you're in your GTI, and every thirty seconds of a very rational, calm hyphen delivery, you I'd hear either tires squealing or the horn, <laughs> followed by this litany of horrendously offensive vulgarities screamed at like you put together words I didn't even know could be put together, and they're like two. It's like multiplicative. Like if each is a two out of ten on the offensive scale, when you put them together, it's a fourteen somehow. Um, <laughs> yes. And I gotta say, I finally watched the TV show called Episodes, which was uh, Matt LeBlanc. Mm. He did like while he was doing Top Gear UK. Not a TV watcher. Um, the show was 
hysterical. It was so funny and so well done that I binged like all seven seasons in a couple days. Uh, you have to watch this. But Matt LeBlanc's ex-wife's character is completely like, he's like, his character is he's just a shithead basically. And his ex-wife is like calm, cool, calm and collected and just rational, whatever. Um, <laughs> there's every, the, the recurring gag is that every time they talk, she's in the car with the kids, the kids in the backseat. And she's like, yeah, hey Matt, what's going on? Whatever, Matt plays himself, so uh, whatever. And yeah, so I was talking to you, move your fucking ass out of the way, you dumb fuck! <sighs> Anyway, talking to your mom and whatever, blah, 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 and it's you. It is yeah. you. That I is... would like the world to know that Hyphen is a normal person, and his robot programming language includes r- the road rage algorithm. <laughs> That's one hundred percent accurate. I guess yeah. No one who's watched the show knows that about me. But God, I it's so do, good. I do get uh, heated behind the wheel. We, I mean, this should be no surprise after watching the left lane uh, etiquette That's right. episode. Yeah, you were honestly but honest about your. Uh... I get. Uh, yeah, that is probably the most emotional that I get is is underway, especially if I'm in a car that has a lot of capability. What the, the issue is, the, the deprivation of joy, right? I extract a lot of joy out of driving, and when some jabroni is has, uh, what my dad would say is has one thumb in their mouth and one thumb up their butt playing Switch, um, so far that they. What is Switch? One thumb in their mouth, yeah, and, and then one going, thumb, and then you're playing Switch. That's the most disgust. A, the most disgusting thing. This is what I'm talking about. Like you take two things that are not really all that offensive, and you multiply them into something. Ew. In any case, okay. if I think that obliviousness is one of the great scourges of humanity. And <laughs> please have me put that on your tombstone. I mean, I'll be long dead, but you know. Yes, we'll, we'll make it note. I mean, well, I'm 90, 94. 94 at this point, so it's maybe not so, so distant. In any case, I think obliviousness is really unforgivable, and it really, it really steams my Titanic. I don't <laughs> <laughs> nice modern culture reference for a 94-year-old. Um, <laughs> what, what, the what deprivation of say? joy. Yes, this is when I'm deprived of joy because some person is out to lunch. Like, just... Get out of the way or have some awareness of some other person. Like, in any case. Alternatively, you could just say they're being rude, um, inconsiderate by virtue of their obliviousness. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, okay. And you're okay. not a fan of uh, inconsideracy. Uh, you want people to be mannered. We want you to have manners. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, happy Car Week. Attend sometime if you haven't this year. Uh, anything else? Are we, we going to do a follow-up to this once we've survived the entire Car Week? I mean, I mean how long have we been going? Is this, is this episode done already? I, I feel like know. we just started. But we always say that, and then we look, it's been an hour. Yeah, but we don't, we don't have our normal setup. This is very weird to be like, and no. there's a camera, and there's a, there, we're at 40 minutes, or oh, four minutes. We're at 0.4 minutes. 40 minutes already? <laughs> oh, Holy shit. It's incredible. But uh, this is, hold on, this is 40 minutes on this recording plus the original? Oh, it's 40 total. I don't know. I don't All know. Right. We, did, did we, Derek, did you do your homework and come up with an episode topic? No. <laughs> I barely sat down long enough to do this. Uh, no, I think I think uh, unless there's anything you else wish to talk about about related to um, no, never Haggerty is that the, oh, yes or related to or what? Thank you, thank you for our to our sponsor Haggerty. No, no they're no. sponsoring us. No, <laughs> yes. Well, we're I mean, not paying pay, you, they, so I hope someone's paying you, but it's oh, certainly fuck. not us. That's right. So here I am at ECME. They they is that another a G wagon? The cars here are just absurd. I can't. It's like full on like ADD squirrel. Mm-hmm. Um, we need to find a way to get us to do an episode in the factory of that zinger thing. Um, that was some of the coolest stuff I've ever seen. That car is pretty neat. Um, so we should do that and that could be like a modern car that'll like upset you. Um, and then we well, can get you Well, if it has angry. an experience that I'm interested. Well, that's, that's what they say. The Who knows? It's have. a flat plane well, crank, I mean, 11,000 RPM V8, flat, uh, V8 with, with some motors, torque factoring motors at the front. I think, and then an MGU, like a motor generator unit in the back. Um, And it just broke the the lap record by two seconds at Laguna Seca. And it wasn't Randy Pope's driving. So the car's probably even faster than that. I'm kidding. Um, So there's some cool stuff. I just, uh, yes, we we should probably do something on that. Um, What else? What am I doing? I'm doing, when is this going to come out? Beats me. So today is Thursday of Car Week, the 12th. In five days, I have another Icons coming out, um, which is Toyota GR86. 
Oh. And I assume this is going to come out in the next five days, so that's probably live. Um, that here's an here's an interesting topic from that. So Toyota GR86 is, as far as I'm concerned, the spiritual successor to the so BR86. A GR86 is the BRZ, right? Mm-hmm. It's just been named 58 different things. Um, it is the spiritual successor to the Porsche 944. Um, it is in that it is a four-cylinder front-engine rear-wheel drive, usable-ish, two plus two-ish sports car with an emphasis on handling, right? And daily Isn't there like a whole host of cars that fits that mold? Are there? Now? No, well, like, you said 944. Like, like, is there any... I mean, there's 240SX. Yeah. Um, there were a whole lot, bottle of, a whole lot of sports coupe Chrysler Conquest. Front-wheel drive. Um, yeah, but there's not... There have not been that many genuinely simple and genuinely affordable cars through the years. The that thing are, about that the 944, up. though, is that it was, like, I think a little higher end in terms of market placement and the performance that it delivered. Well, this is the joke, is that 40 years later, it's the same price. The 944s were like 27,000 bucks. This is 27,000 bucks. Yeah, but 27,000 um, back then was like was 60 Was a ton of money, something. yeah. Um, so we're spoiled, but that the new 86s, um, I hope this is going to have to wait until after that. But the, the car is great. But the, uh, the really upsetting thing for me is that I finally drove a 944 Turbo. And? It's a heartbreaker. That's even better looking than the regular 944. So that S2 turbo front end and whatever. Why can't that car have a Revy, Cami, personal... That was always my complaint oh. about that car. I mean, I, you, you, did you like the motor in the 968? Yes-ish. Better than the 944. I didn't like it. I mean, really? I don't know. Go drive, a, go drive an 8-valve 944 or, or a 944 turbo. turbo. Acoustic, not event. The 944 Turbo was not all that fast. Um, this is my problem with that car. It's fine. The period reviews lost their mind over handling. Yeah, they handle really well. But the engine is a non, a complete non-event. I agree. I agree. Uh, and when it looks 10, it has to drive 10. And I think those I cars mean, look 10. I mean, I sold my 968 to buy a 996. So that tells you. And it was a lot of it was noise. Mm-hmm. A lot of it was yeah. engine noise. And it was also how I was using the car. But, I mean, it's a car that you get a lot of value at when you're using hard. But I think in not lawn hard use, it's uh, not that much fun. And cars like that are always a little bit underwhelming to me. If you don't enjoy driving it, like, the majority of the time that you're in it, then I'm, I'm not that interested in it. And that's yeah, always I mean, how I felt about 944s. That having been said, with 911 prices doing what they are, I, it represents a good value for whatever a nine, good 944 costs. Twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 now. They used to be eight. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I can think of... for a turbo of, and four for a non-turbo. I really, I can think of so many better ways that, to have an experience for that kind of money. Um, and this is my problem. What Heartbreaker. What, what experience would you rather have? For, uh, what is it, 20? 20 Give me an E30. Yeah, yeah, E30 or your... I mean, your, I just said someone... Mark asked one Volkswagens. Me, right, ask me yesterday on, 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 like, out of a random person on Instagram. E30, 325 IS or 944? What, was your, what would your answer be? E30. Yeah, 100, 100 times over. Yeah. And it's because of the engine. Yeah, I mean, handling-wise, 944 wins. Looks-wise, 944 wins. Um, prestige, who cares? But but 100 times out of 100. Uh, yeah, the, the E30 six-cylinder cars, there is a rightness. There's something about those cars when I get in them, and I'm not a BMW fan, and I, I like, especially the contemporary cars, I just hate how far they've fallen, how much they've lost their way. But you drive something from that era, like E36s, E30s, non-M cars, uh, you drive it and you're just like, there's this, a rightness to how this car functions. Mm-hmm. If, I feel that way about the E38, mm-hmm. actually. That just, it feels instinctive and it does what you want it to do and it, it feels like you trust it a lot and it's going to do exactly what you want and right. behave in a really natural way. And maybe that's because of the first car that I ever had was an E28 and I spent a lot of time in that car. Mm-hmm. That's the car I learned to drive in. So maybe it's just a familiarity thing because like you put people who've not driven air-cooled 911s in them before, and they're like, "This is disorienting and weird, and I don't like the pedals." And like, there's a lot, mm. of, and they come back with all these comments, and the comments are all things that I don't even notice, notice yeah. because I'm used to those cars. Well, here's the thing: you put anyone in an E30, and they don't have those comments. Their comments are, "Wow, the steering wheel's really high." Yeah. When they first sit in it, and they drive it, and they hit the limiter six times in a row, and that's their next comment. They're like, "Wow, this thing really revs right into the limiter," and that's it. Everything else is like, it just goes away. The car just wraps around you and becomes invisible. Yeah, it's got this neutralness to the behavior, but mm-hmm. it, it's really just, and E36 is the same way. So E36, E36 is too. Yeah. The E46s um, were magic in that, there was, there was nothing. Are you talking about M or non-M? Non-M. 
Yes. Give me a 330i Z- yeah. ZHP yeah. performance pack. Amazing. That car is the world's most perfect compact sedan. Yep. What, what, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Um, hmm. So okay. buy all that stuff if you want an experience that's good. I just, but also buy a cooling system every 15 minutes. Well, whatever. Nothing's perfect. I just, I, I just, it was such a heartbreak to get. And, and the guy who owned the 944 Turbo couldn't have been a nicer guy. Um, and I am so in love with the way it looked. It was Zermatt, which is the slightly like, gold, slightly gold of course silver. You love that. Of course, you love I do. because it's, it's the same color as half of your cars. Half is a strong. Exactly. Half. Exactly. <gasps> half. No, hold on. Is it? Yeah, it's four out of eight. Yeah, because. Shit. The Beatrice and the, both of the VWs and the Mercedes, Mercedes. are all yeah. that same color. Okay, I think I need to buy something that's like orange or something. Um, but no, I mean, the, the car is just stunning spec, stunning color, stunning fucking car. And it just, I, I expected to offer to buy it from him. And, and I gave you him, did that with the I actually the offered to buy the GMC. I offered to buy it. <laughs> and they said no. And I thank, thank my lucky stars that they did. I don't need another car. But that is, wow. But you do, and it's a cyclone. I want a cyclone. Yeah. Yeah. So will you still, still speak to me? Honestly? Yeah, I, only if you let me drive it. I would like to rally in it. I, I think it would win a rally. And by that, I mean, like, you're just the coolest person. You show up in a two-seat pickup truck with no towing ability, no cargo holding ability, no place for a duffel bag, and you keep up with the sports cars <sighs> oh, on a back road until the brakes... So big pads. But, like, I'll put... It's probably got brake cooling ducts. I don't know. But I'd put like really aggressive pads on it. Just fucking go for it. What's the worst that could happen? Just careening off a cliff into a... No airbags or... Never mind. Yeah, no, let's... let's, Is it it separate frame? It's body and frame. It's an S10 pickup. It's actually... It handles. I mean, it's like three inches lower than a regular S10 pickup. So it turns out if you put big wheels, sticky tires, and low suspension on a pickup truck, they'll turn. I mean, it pulled 0.80 on Skidpad in 1991, on which was... On some kind of Goodyear Eagle or all something. All seasons. On all seasons. On mildly high performance all seasons. The 0-16-4.3, to it outbraked the Ferrari 348 TB because it was the first ever production pickup truck with four-wheel anti-lock brakes. And drums. ABS with drums. with drums. That's one of those weird overlap things like cars that have navigation systems and cassette players. Here's another one. There's a car that's in production today that just went into production this year that has anti-lock brakes and stability control and er- everything else modern with drums. Four-wheel drums? And no. it's electric. Rear, rear drums. Rear drums. Uh, is it like a Chevy um, Volkswagen? Shitbox? No, it is a Volkswagen ID4. There's oh. fucking drums on it. Drums So you have an all-new electric EV with rear-wheel drive and all the other things that Volkswagen did, it's got drums. Hmm. And we are no longer have the joy of having the Dodge Journey, which as I understand it was the last four-speed automatic ever offered. I don't know why you'd know that, but sure. I know exactly why I know it. It's because my best friend is kind of weird like that. Okay. Um, Sorry for your best friend and for you. Uh, All right, next, I have a, a topic for next episode. GTI. Oh, because that's right, because your new video about the, the next generation, the Mark 8 GTI will be out. And then we'll, at some point I can talk about it, yeah. You, you can comment. And you bought a Mark 7, which we, we mentioned on the, on the last one, but you've now modified the Mark 7. Also true. In a rather fun way. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah. Shocking. And you drove the Mark You 8. suggested something about the VW G- uh, Volkswagens for content. I am just shocked. And on that bombshell... <laughs> Um, All right, so I will see you. I think we'll probably go back to our regular format of being away from each other because, frankly, you smell. (laughs) It's a lot less work. It's a lot less work. We don't have to have a camera guy with the camera. You know, we don't have camera issues with our iPhone. We're just going to make fun of him because he can't talk back. He's not mic'd. So if you hear screaming in the background, it's it's him. Yeah, it's just just distant rumbling. It's the F40. (laughs) Can I go drive it? uh, If you buy the motor, if it blows up. How much is the motor? $25,000, $35,000. Might be worth it. Better just drive one that doesn't have a motor that explodes. That's free. The fuck am I gonna find an F40 that's free? There's no, 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 borrowing I'm it. Gonna, yeah, I'm gonna stand on the side of the road with like, you know, will suck exhaust fumes for, I don't know, what the fuck? That you, took a completely you get, different direction than I was expecting. Answer me a question. How do you get someone to give you the keys to an F40? The same way you get someone to give you the keys to a 288 GTO. I had just to suck did. his... Exhaust fumes, understood. <laughs> Nothing, I never said. <laughs> All, I, 
<sighs> this episode's done. I think so. <laughs> it's going downhill. Here, have a gummy dick. <laughs> Would you like one? A gummy dick? Sure. All right. Is this one sweet or sour? You tell me. Okay, I think we're done. Mm-hmm. <laughs>